big as I thought it was. Oh, it's the back one. The back one. <laughs> We finally got our game-changing delivery. This is from Nature's Pond. It's our gear that we're going to upgrade our pond with. We've got solar aeration, we got windmill aeration, we've got solar panels, we've got all the gear we need to successfully raise our fish this year. Even though there's ice on the pond, we've been working on a little bit of a project. You can see the full build on my brother's channel, but drum roll, please. Oh, there's no drum roll. This thing here, is a wind powered aeration system. It is a windmill from Nature's Pond Cares, the Condors windmill. And what it does is it spins when the wind is blowing and it sends air down a tube. You can see the tube here. And what it does is it's got a little aeration stone that's sitting at the base of the pond and it keeps the aeration going when the sun isn't shining. Now that is pretty cool. And uh, like I said, the full build is on my brother's channel. He's covered it pretty extensively. That's pretty neat. The thing is 16 feet tall. It sits in the air. And as I promise you, it does move when it is windy. I've got my ladder set up here because we just finished it. We first started with the tower and we assembled the base structure by adding nuts and bolts where required, we first started with the top section and worked our way down until the end of section. We kind of made sort of like a teepee type, type structure. And then we added some stiffener bars to the sides in order to give it a little bit of rigidity. Once that was completed, we started working on the head. Now, in order to start the head, we started with a center ring and then we added the fins to them and added stiffener on those and then left the bolts all loose in order to tighten up later once it's flat. Once that was done, we worked on the tail fin. So we put the both tail fins together. We added the steel supports that, for the tail. And then we worked on the diaphragm pump. We actually added the tail fin to the diaphragm pump and the center pipe that holds the diaphragm pump on the tower. Then we moved the tower to the location. We added the propeller and the diaphragm pump on to the top of the tower. We Put it, hit it down so it was secured in place. And then once that was done, we used a little bit of muscle and we stood the entire tower up. Once the tower was stood up, we used the supplied three metal posts, drove them into the ground and bolted them in place, making sure it was level in order for our tower, our windmill on top, pivot around to face the wind. And just like that, you have wind aeration for your pond. It's got a little bit of a tail on that thing. Uh, yeah, we're 16 feet in the air. When that thing blows, it orients itself in the direction of the wind in order to capture it and efficiently disperse power down to the stone, which produces the air. By power, I mean it sends air because there's a little diaphragm pump in the top portion of that thing. But yeah, we've assembled this whole thing. It's kind of like Meccano. If you guys, uh, if you guys are looking for something like this for your pond, the link will be in the description below to get yourself your very own windmill. But I think this is an asset to our pond. We are going full out on the pond this year. This is one of the additions that we, are, we have done in order to maintain our fish population. And uh, I think it's gonna be awesome. All we gotta do is wait for the wind to blow, but we're doing, we're doing dual source sort of pond stuff this year. We're also gonna do another solar system in order to, it's gonna have a battery backup system. So it'll run pretty much continuously 24 hours a day, even at nighttime because we want our fish to survive. But anyways, I figured I'd give you guys a little bit of an update on the pond situation and kind of uh, give you a tour, you know, keep you guys updated. It's another fine day of building. So today we're working on our sawmill set. If you're just joining us, we've already done a couple of episodes on this particular build. Now this build was uh, basically thought up to house the mill and uh, give it a nice place to keep dry and out of the wind, out of the sunshine. So that's what we've uh, done so far. We've uh, we've put the posts in, we've put the roof rafters in, we put the roof on, and now today we're gonna work on closing in the structure so it's a comfortable place to work in inclement weather, whether it's snowing or raining or extra blowy. But we wanna preserve access to make the functionality of the mill still work if you wanna do you know, custom stuff, extra long stuff. Currently the mill is set up for 16 foot six long and uh, you can get that from the front, which is gonna remain open, but we wanna be able to have access to the side. So I'm thinking large barn door here that slides 
open, uh, you know, during sunshiny weather, you can have it open and you can have all the sun and uh, all the breeze. So if you want the dust to blow kind of through the building, you still can. And then over here, we're going to have sort of a storage area, uh, closed off area so you could actually store or you want to dry lumber. So that's the plan today is to close up these gable ends, make a door and then start on our side access here to close that thing off. So let's get started. In order to start closing on my one end, what I started off with some a couple of two by tens I had laying around and I nailed them together in order to make myself a continuous beam to go across the front. Once that was done, I used a hand planer and I trued up the front logs in order for my front beam to remain straight because that's going to be the backing for my steel track that's going to house my barn door. Once that was all said and done, I lifted it up into place. I used some large structural screws in order to screw the face of the board in. And then once that's done, I can carry on with the rest of my build. Hey, Frankie, you want, some, you want some sausage? Seems like all we do is eat, Grant. It does. Doesn't it? It's too windy today, so we're cooking in the shop. We got the, uh, we got all the doors open. We're cooking with uh, the old Coleman grill. We're eating all the ham, pork, everything. We're gonna have to make a fit. There you go. Waiting for sausage to cook and we're making cookies. These are uh, the Wooded Beardsman cookies. Those are kind of cool. I think Chris is going to give those away, one of these away on his channel. I was making these things because they're just neat. That's it there. And then uh, we got like a little oven going on. We got all our smoke contained in a little box. And then we got it vented outside. Hey, Frank, you just waiting for the sausage to be done? Mark's here. Yeah. Hey! 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 Wait, did you, like, did you smell the, the sausage That's cooking? That's it, man. You can smell it from down the road, and I just made a hard left, and... There you go. Here we are. So, actually, Mark was the one that made this, uh, this, this vent hood for me. Remember, remember our misadventure was our smoker? And, like, that's where I got the idea for this thing, is that... Mark, we made a box with a smoker, and it turns out galvanized isn't good for smoker, but it's great for whole housing the laser cutter, and, and... Laser engraver, laser and cutter, and for your efforts, actually, did you set yours up yet? No, not yet. No, no. you got to make yourself a box. That's right. I need a box first. <laughs> you don't want to stare at the uh, the blue light. The forbidden blue light. Yeah, you don't want to stare at that laser because uh, yeah, you go blind. So that's why it's in the box. It's two two birds, one stone. You don't get to stare at the forbidden blue laser. You can actually see just a little chunk of it there, but uh, you also don't get the smoke, which is uh, which really, like I could prevent myself from looking at the forbidden blue light. It was the smoke that I was I was inhaling the forbidden smoke. Don't do that. Anyways, we got it all set up. We got like a like it's our our spare laptop that doesn't close and it's all mangled. But anyways, it works really good for this kind of shop setup because it, it you don't care. This accumulates stuff. Laptops seem to be a dime a dozen nowadays. You can like pick one up for like 50 bucks and that's perfect to kind of have in your shop. You got the wooded beardsman so if you want to stick your drink on my brother's face you can. <laughs> Yeah. This would be great. I'll put my uh, put my whiskey on it. There you okay. go. Yeah. Got to varnish them still. Got to put the sealer. Sealer's important. Frying the bun in. In the pan. In the with pan the, with, with juices the... and butter. It's it's good. It's good. Yeah. Oh my! It is vegan butter. Yeah. So it's, it's got to be good for it's us. Vegetables it's made for plants. Vegetables, so it's good for us. Yeah. All right. I'll take the third one. I, I feel that there'll be less grease on the third one. <clears throat> I need that. The old bun to sausage ratio has to be good. I got my sweet baby rays because that's what I like on mine. My compliments to the chef. Thank you. Thank you, well, you can't have one. You have a sensitive stomach. <laughs> oh, good sausage. <laughs> How tough are you, mouthful? <laughs> We're gonna enjoy our lunch. We get back to work. You guys should try this. Have you guys ever done that? What's your favorite thing on sausages? I like sweet baby rays. You guys are sauerkraut and what? You got honey mustard going on? Yeah. That's it? You got buttered buttered bun fried in the pan that you cook the sausages in. You got sauerkraut with honey mustard. Fresh and bun. sweet baby rays. You got sweet baby rays on it too? It's the everything okay, special. Yeah. Everything special. I want to know what you guys like on your sausage. I like them plain Jane. I don't know why I, I just, I'm plain, plain guy. But that fried bun is something else. And the... The bun to meat okay, ratio so. is important, but I got like, you don't want the sausage sticking out too far. You don't want it too far in. So you get like a, a bad bite. You just get bun. 
when I make my sausages, I make them nine feet long so you can cut them custom. Because that's important to me. Tell me what's important to you. We're going to enjoy our sausages and get back to work. Using some leftover plywood we had from scavenging some pallets earlier on, we were able to sheet the ends of the gables in order to accommodate our pine shake later on. All right, moving forward, we're, we're kind of planning for the door. We're not gonna build the door right now, but we want a barn door. This is what barn doors are for. People that put them in their houses, I don't know. I think that's a thing of the past. Is it like a design trend that's gone away? It's fading out. It's fading out. And they're crazy expensive. The, the good thing about this one is it was free. This is actually a tear out from uh, my garage door guy. He had some on display and he was like, you want these? And I said, absolutely. I took them and, and he happened to have them welded together. So they're like 20 feet long. Perfect application for this. Although they have sort of like a little bracket welded on the top of it. Cause he had them hanging from a T-bar ceiling with some threaded rod. I don't need those. So I'm gonna cut those things off. And my plan is to mount it to the top here out a little bit. So my door will slide out of the road so we can have like windy days if we want them. But we need to get that in place first in order to know where our wall has to go and then where our door is going to be. Is that right, Grant? Yep. Got anything to add to that? Mm, I think it's pretty straightforward. It summed it right up, didn't I? Yeah. So I think we're gonna use some GRK screws, which are like structural screws. We're gonna screw up through the, the I guess the top of that track. We're gonna drill some holes in there because they're really uh, shallow head structural screws and that'll hold our door and then i think on this side we'll be able to clear the post once it's fully open or you know what a lot of the barn doors they pivot slightly so if the if that post isn't quite in the right place it won't matter but i like the way it's shaping up so far like look at that it looks like a looks like a mini house or like a regular size house it's actually quite big <laughs> and that piece of uh piece of of tin fit really well. I'm really pleased the way this is this is sorting out. And I'm using a lot of stuff I got laying around, which is bonus bonus. My original plan was to put two of these windows side by each and have them like an awning window so you could let some air through if you wanted to. But I think hindsight, it's kind of too it's too big, it kind of gives us no space here. So I think I'm gonna opt for one. I've gotta cut this thing off. It's still going to be a hinged window this way. <clears throat> Frankie wants to help. So like you can see it right about there. That should allow enough light in there. Cause in the end of the day, that's basically going to be storage area and I don't wanna eat it up all with windows. The other option is to do it like this, but then it gives me just a bunch of place to put nothing. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna go with this. I picked these up uh, actually for free, a whole bunch of them. So I've got lots to choose from. Well, I really wanted a bigger window in there. So, uh, well, I thought of an idea and uh, it worked. I didn't film it though, but I'm gonna show it to you. So what I did was I actually cut uh, a window off the other window and I'm just gonna fuse it together. So I took like mommy window and daddy window and made like a, a super window. I'm just gonna like join it there, probably glue it. And then I've got a three pane window, which will go, which actually will fit nicely in the front, more balanced as opposed to one just kind of in the middle. I'll have a three pane window that it, it feels better. I don't know why. I just, I feel one was, one was not enough and, and two across, which would have been six panes was too much. I always find if you have your windows, it's uh, a lot easier to kind of plan building because otherwise you got to either spend a whole pile of money to get custom windows, then you can kind of lay out what you're doing with what you have as opposed to spending a whole pile of cash on, you know, getting windows. So that's why I'm gonna go three pane. I'm gonna glue that up. Yeah, I just gotta frame it out and then we got our window in. That'll be exciting. How's that for luxury? I liked my front window so much, I actually put one on the side because, well, it worked. I like the fact that it's a six foot horizontal window that's probably going to open up to the inside of the building so I can just tuck it away. So when I want it open, I can actually have it open. Now this wall over here is going to be a solid wall because after all it is a shed and I do want storage space, but I think this little area here will be a great place for uh, either a band sharpener to, uh, to sharpen my band so I don't always have to buy new ones. Uh, I think that's on the menu in the uh, in the future. Norwood does have a uh, bandsaw sharpener. I'm, I'll probably be looking into that because you kind of need 
a relatively large area because the band itself needs to be sitting up flat or sitting up pointy wise and then you got your grinder that goes there so that's the idea here and you also want a lot of light so you can actually see so we got the two windows going on there be a nice little bench here it's really got some really nice north light i really like this setup it's very i don't know this is what i imagine like an old-timey workshop to look like and uh, i'm gonna achieve that goal pretty good I'm so far so good anyway. My original plan up here was to do white pine shake uh, because that's what I have. But uh, then I got word that uh, Skitter Kev over at Skitter Kev's YouTube channel is uh, doing a job where he's got a lot of cedar. So I'm going to go visit him to, uh, to take a look what he's got in his refuse pile. The stuff that basically the slash pile that's going to get burned and see what he's got. Because uh, cedar up there would be nice, but I was going to use pine because I have it and I haven't done it yet but if I can get some large diameter cedar to go up there I think it would tie it all in really nice we're just here at this logging operation the landowner here decided that his forest needed a little haircut so we had a forester come in mark out all the trees and what they did was they harvested a lot of these cedars so as you can see there's a giant pile of cedar here and uh, I actually reached out to uh, to him his, uh, he's got a YouTube channel. His name is Skitter Kev. I already like him based on his name. And uh, he's graciously allowed me to save some of the butts. So what I want to do is I want to take these, some of the chunks, basically a slash pile, and uh, use them to make cedar shake, which will save me a little bit of work. will stop a little bit of the other stuff going to waste. Well, when I say waste, it's not really waste because it's either firewood or it's habitat for small animals. So my plan is to actually grab some of the chunks and use them to make the shakes for the gable ends on the sawmill cabin. Probably, I think he's selling them to the Mennonites, but uh, a lot of this stuff, there's cedars here. These are big, big stuff here. Like that's crazy. That's a crazy big cedar. When they get that big, generally what happens is the center rots out of them. But uh, these are like that. But uh, anything that's uh, too large. And then he's got a pile of firewood here, which is ash with the emerald ash borer. Basically all these trees are dead. They all have to come down. Otherwise they pose a safety hazard to uh, people walking in the forest. All right, here with Kevin. Kevin, you're, you're the man. <laughs> yeah, try to be sometimes. What's your YouTube channel's name? Skitter Kev. See, I got it right. Skitter Kev. He, that's an awesome name. Yeah. I, I, I like it. It's hard to remember. No. <laughs> so what are you doing here? You're just tuning her up. Yeah, so uh, we had a hydraulic leak. We had to change an O-ring. Uh, had to lift the cab to um, just top up the engine oil. So Right. Everything's being a compact machine. Yeah. Everything's compact, kind of like skid steers and right. mini axles. Stuff. So this this saves your back and your legs and all that sweat. Yeah, safety. That's right. As well, safety is a big thing actually when you're topping any kind of ash tree because there are a lot of dead just kind of standing there, right? Yeah. So that's kind of the main major reason why we got this was uh, all the ash we cut. Yeah. <clears throat> and gets a guy away from the tree. Perfect. You can cut this, and you know we're not getting any younger and ups production. <laughs> On that, we're kind of looking because with the firewood side of the business. Yeah. Um, we need more. Cool. Always more. Awesome. More, well, more, more. I'm going to look through your pile and see if I can find some cedar that'll be useful for my shakes. Yeah. So you got to check out Kev's channel, Skitter Kev on YouTube. The link will be down in the description below. If you want to check him out, you should like and subscribe his channel. He does a lot of really cool machinery sort of work. We're like it's always, it's a Kubota's, it's the, it's, what's this, Fabtech? Yeah, Fabtech. It's got a grapple. It's, it's like, it's like yeah. Tinker Toy, right? Like it's big. I'll show you. Let's, let's take a Look at the saw head on this thing. Look at that thing. That thing's angry looking. So this, I'm like eight feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I'm about five, seven, five, eight. So you can tell how, yeah. how big this head is. That thing's a monster. Basically, you grab the tree. These are your grab arms. Yeah. These rollers go around it. There's a saw blade down here that we still have to get the chain on. Yeah. We broke one uh, on Friday. Grabs the tree, cuts it, lays it down. And then these rollers will spin feeds the tree through these these are actually grabbers or knives you can see they're sharp oh yeah and that, and that top one that breaks the branches off that will break the branches off it's sharp on both sides oh, that's crazy well. and this is your measuring wheel so no it will measure if you're cutting eight foot logs 12 foot log whatever 25 foot length firewood 
it will cut it to length awesome. how you need it. So. Well, maybe I'll come back when you're actually operating this thing. We'll get some footage of that thing going. That thing's that thing's a monster. Yeah. All right, I won't keep you too long. I'll let you get you back to your yep, stuff. Sure. And I'll take a look. Awesome. How's it going? It's going. Excellent. It's nice spring weather, isn't it? Oh, I know. It's a beautiful spring. <laughs> Second winter. Yeah, that's or right. Fifth winter, wherever we're at now. It's continuous winter. Oh, I know. It never ends. It's the liquid, snowy sunshine. Yeah. Oh, some sun would be nice. <laughs> yeah. Thing. Then I'm gonna center off, no big deal. We cut around that. That's awesome. Well, this is what our haul looks like. This is uh, some uh, eastern white cedar. As you can see, it is massive based on the size of my hand, which is also massive. And uh, yeah, so like this one's got to be like close to 20 inches in diameter. I know it's not crazy big for the west coast, but East Coast is crazy big. We got a whole truckload of them, which uh, which will be squared up and then put on the shake maker, and then uh, the cedar shakes will be made. I guess they're shingles. Shingles or shakes depends what you uh, what you want to call them. Either way, it's cladding and it's gonna be very very pretty for our. Sawmill Mahal. All right, guys. Well, when the sun is shining and it's warm in the springtime, you kind of drop what you're doing and you start boiling or you continue boiling maple sap. So that's what we've been up to a little bit during the finishing process in the sawmill shack is I've got this stuff boiling. So it's like a little bit of a chore because you always have to kind of feed your fire. That thing's fire's going. I promise you it's, well, it's stuck because it gets too hot and it stays stuck. I gotta grind a little bit off of that thing. So as you can see, we've got a boil. We haven't actually emptied this thing yet completely. We've been just keep continuously adding sap to continue the boil. Continue the boil. Normally these types of logs would be destined for firewood because they're so short, but I, made a jig that allows me to accommodate really small pieces of wood onto my mill to square them up. So the plan is to actually square these guys up and then put them on my shake making jig that Norwood makes and uh, makes shakes for the front of the building. I've never attempted to, uh, to kind of square up a log on this thing. It's usually designed, this little jig here, is designed to make kind of just single passes. You secure the bottoms and then just kind of slice them off, usually making charcuterie boards or whatnot but uh, I'm gonna attempt to make a square block because I want a uh, square shake and they all have to be the same length. So let's, let's give this thing a whirl, see if, uh, see if we can actually do it. And uh, yeah, it would be repurposing something that otherwise is garbage and we're gonna reuse it for something cool. See, we're under the roof and it's nice. It's like summer day out here. And then you go out here and it's snowing. That's uh, but underneath the shelter, look how, look how, look how, you got nothing. Like it's perfect, we work, we, we don't have to stop for the weather anymore. All right, so that's what we got for shake right now. That was uh, two, actually one log, one little chunk of log. So that's, that's a significant amount if you kind of line them all up. Uh, you know, you got like, that's four square feet right there. That's one line, one line, four square feet, eight square feet, so. That's, uh, as you can see, once you get her all set up, she makes shake in a hurry. Or is they shingles? Shingles or shakes? Cedar shingles, shakes, whatever you want to call them. Well, it's a little breezy in here. It's a little too breezy. So <laughs> we, instead of putting our cedar shake up at the front, we're going to be uh, studying in this back wall. There's a little bit of blowing snow. It's kind of like coming across. So once we have this wall, kind of like our windscreen here, where this tree is and this post is, will have a better kind of control of, of the wind. Because you still want airflow in, in your sawmill shed because you don't want sawdust to kind of accumulate and swirl around. So you kind of want directional wind. It's ideal the way the snow is actually going through, but because the sawdust will go the same way. But we don't really want to accumulate snow. As you can see, we're accumulating snow, drifting snow. It's spring in Canada, isn't it? 
So there, that's how, that's all the shake. You can see all the shake. Can you see it all? That's a significant amount of shake. It's got a, it's got that great smell to it, the cedar. I had Don cut a number of 80 inch two by fours to act as my studs. I added a top and a bottom plate to continue on my wall. And then once all the studs were cut, I fit them in place. And then once I had all the studs in place, I had 14 and a half inch blocks attached to each stud in order to prevent twisting in the future. It also gives me a nailing edge for my board and batten that's going to be installed at a later date. All right, we're moving right along. We've got uh, a sunny day. We're gonna be installing our shakes or our shingles. I guess it depends where you are and to what they're called. Don, what are these called? You think they're shakes? If they're, if they're sh are they shakes when their hands split? I have no idea. Or are they shims? We got shims, shakes, and shingles. shingles. So these are sh What are these? I don't know what these shakes. are. The shakes. Maybe you guys can tell us what these are. These are like sawn shingle shake shims. Shishu. <laughs> we're installing them up here in our gable ends. And the reason why we're doing it today, I didn't actually want to do it today. I wanted to actually make board and batten, but uh, it's supposed to rain pretty heavily uh, the next day. It's got rain, snow, sun. It's, the weather can't make up its mind. So rather doing this in the rain, I could probably do board and batten in the rain. I don't want to be doing that in the rain because I got to go up and down the ladder in order to uh, nail it on. So we're going to start up here and we're going to work our way up the gable ends. It shouldn't take us too long. We got all our shakes made, which was the, uh, the trouble. Well, not really the trouble. We got a whole pile of them here. So that's where Don's the cut man. I'm the install man. This should make short work of this thing. And it's going to look super crazy pretty. And I'm going to let it go gray because I like that look. I know you can seal them and preserve that cedar look, that nice warm glow, but I don't want that. I want this, the gray old sort of barn looking thing. So that's what we're going to go with. Let's get some shake installed. What was the hardest part of cutting those? Cutting them the right way. <laughs> you got to wrap your brain around whether because you got the, you got the fat side and you got the skinny side and you got, and then you got to flip it which way. And then I got to kind of describe which way I want them done. So we had a system going on that uh, seemed to work out okay. We got a system just at the end. At the end, we figured it out. And then we were like, oh, we're done. It's always the way. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much finished for the day. It took a little bit longer than I anticipated. But as you can see, the results are amazing. This is freshly sawn eastern white cedar as a as a shake installation siding or is it a shingle or is it a shake? I don't know. It's sawn shingles, but anyways, this was a uh, discard pieces of wood. And as you can see, it's kind of, it gives a little bit of a, uh, a stylized at the front. These little, these gable ends that are like that are kind of, kind of a pain to do, but once they're done, they look pretty cool. Just got a little bit of a fascia board and stuff like that to be done. But like that thing is shaping up to be pretty, pretty neat. I like it. It did take us a lot longer than we anticipated. I assumed it was going to take a couple hours. It pretty much took all afternoon and uh, the sun is setting. So we'll have to carry on again tomorrow with uh, some more progress, but eh, you know what? I'm pleased with what we got done so far. All right, are you guys keeping track of how much money I've spent on this building yet? I think we're at uh, about 50 bucks. I got uh, just for framing nails, the Chris Bear framing nails, the clipped head ones. Actually, yeah, they are clipped head ones. The uh, yeah, Princess Auto's got them on sale, and uh, that's pretty much where I buy a lot of my fasteners. So that's pretty much what we're in for material on this guy because we've reused pretty much everything. If we wanna, if we wanna include bands, we got bands for the bandsaw, a couple. So we're at just under a hundred bucks, probably in uh, in material. So that's not bad for so far. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. Frankie's pleased with that too. Frankie, what do you think? Hey, buddy. Hey, hey, Frankie. Frankie's running around like a freak. She likes the rain. She likes the snow. She just likes running around. Hey, Frankie. Yes. Yes. Where'd you go? Where you going? What's going on? Hey, Frankie. Frankie, bring me back up. Come on. My hands are freezing. Good girl. Bring me back up. Hey, I'm not coming to get it. All right, let's get some uh, get some boards on. Get this thing. Uh, well, get something. Frankie likes running in between the studs. Hey, Frankie, you're not gonna be able to run through the studs anymore. 
get some boards on because it's not going to get itself done. Alright, we got some wood we can start with. These are one inch boards by about eight inches and they're about 12 feet long. That might give us enough to do the front. I haven't cut my battens yet. I'm gonna see what we got left because I can always make my my battens later. Gotta get some boards nailed on. It's not the ideal weather for building, but it never is. That's why that's why in Canada you, it's always winter, even though we're in the middle of spring. I'm gonna try to button up the front of that guy now just to get myself some you know get some progress because you know what it's it's a crummy day i might as well just kind of just kind of work away i don't mind i don't really mind the weather what do you think frank the weather for the dogs not even, eh? Ivik? Ridic? Snowed. Could I take your order, please? Oh, you want some five quarter? Sure, no problem. Just pull up on the back. We'll mill you up right away. Oh, hi, welcome to Kevin's sawmill. Yeah, just pull around back. You got your logs with you? That's good. What, you need some five quarter? Absolutely, we can mill that up right away. Window install time! I don't know if I got this quite situated yet. There's my window! <laughs> That's not bad. A couple more screws. Looks like we're all, uh, we're all shimmed out. The window closes like this. And when you want it open, I'm gonna put a latch. Actually, chain it up for the season. It'll probably flip right up. Do I want to flip it right up? It does. Look at that. That's pretty sweet. Look at that. You can open the so the window's closed. So you can see I have a latch, so it stays closed. And then when you want to open it, you just flip it straight up. And if you had two hands, you can kind of. You can put it right there, right out, out, in and out of the way, so you can have your unobstructed window opening. Well, how's that for accomplishment? We got our first window in. We've got pretty much our front wall done. We just need a door, and uh, well, we got the rest of the thing to do. But you know what? The way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time, and uh, this certainly has become an elephant. The sawmill mahal. It's uh, it's it's shaping up. It's actually. We got like full-fledged rain out there and we got no water coming in here. So you know what? That's a, that's a success in my books. You know what? I, I hope you guys are enjoying the series. I really enjoy making this series. Uh, this has like been on the list for a while. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this one and uh, join me on the next one.